This is war. We bad enough. This make you so shit that you saw you your draw. We won't or wrong. We're taking it gone. I'll rip all your gowns. But nothing is say shut your mouth. We're fucking on granite. You're robbing this country that's born to Hawaii. Let's make this shit out. And this is a house. And nobody kicking the sound. Now my brothers let them come through. We stay in quiet so far. I spent a lot of time making sketches, just musical sketches, hundreds of them. Like a, a little piece of music. I sort of make them and I kind of collect them. I wasn't exactly sure what I was making them for at the time. I guess I've been doing that for probably 10 years or something. For me, that is probably the most sort of free, unencumbered kind of artistic expression that I've got is doing those. The people on this, I kind of wanted it to decide itself just by there being a sort of natural quality. I think something just sort of started emerging. Being here was so crucial and everything being done here, being in the room, because that's why it's ended up with a coherent uh, feeling. Richard surrendered to accepting that what would be would be, as opposed to kind of striving for a sound or you know, just letting things happen. He invited us to his studio in London and it's like history from there. He hit me up and said, yeah, like, he's got a couple of beats. So I was thinking, but you ain't got no good beats, man. Like, you know what I mean? Trust me, that man is fussy, bro. I was showing him music, he showed me some music, and yeah, he told me he was working on his album. He wanted me to come down to the studio to just catch a vibe. And when he said, do you want to be a part of it, we were so happy and really honoured. It was just random people coming together and like working on a project together. We were complete strangers when we met each other. It wasn't choreographed, you know what I'm saying? It kind of all happened naturally. The whole idea of collaboration is not really widely understood. People don't really get it, because people ask you these questions about, but how does it get to be like this, who did what? I mean, you can try and break that down, but that's not the opposite of what you're doing. When you're making these things, the last thing you're thinking about is like, who? It's just what? There was just a certain point for me where I realized that if you've got the right approach to it, you can be a musician of any level and any level of experience and you can be in a room with any other musician. It doesn't matter how virtuoso they are, how experienced they are, how many Grammys they've got. Actually, the right attitude and outlook is all that really counts. You can add, you know, you can bring something to it.
everyone involved put their egos aside to make something beautiful, I think. It's a place of experiment and love. And so when he works with you, it's almost like magical. You could almost go to the studio not knowing what you'd done in the day, but having left with some sort of feeling of nourishment. It's just a great kind of space for expression. What I think that was the, like, the making of a, a big and necessary mess that's really fun to do, and I think it's childlike to do that to an extent. And that's a very necessary component of art, is to be childlike and to play and to just splash the paints about and see what happens. Well, he's got such a like wealth of knowledge about music. It's like a real nice balance between being spirited and not over thoughtful with the right moments, but then also being extremely like thoughtful of like the references and what like things mean to him. To be around, you know, other musicians or you know other people, kind of being creative. It's like energizing. Mountains of gold, rubies and pearls, round we go, it's all that we know. And both times it's round we go, it's all that we know. Yeah. One time it's about it's the money and one time it's the violence. So we know, yeah, 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 that's it. Mountains of gold. Mountains of gold, rubies and stones. point you've got to become the adult and make sense of it and tidy up and then you hear the odd you know you hear the odd thing which could be the start of something else
essentially the shows that we did were just uh, they were just a public incarnation of something we've been doing privately for several years. One of the things that created a lot of space was that someone like Sanfa, who is clearly enormously gifted to a sort of supernatural kind of level, really, is also got this massive amount of humility. We've grown up to show love. There's no love unless you own up. And no love, it tolls up. I guess, I guess you got to So most people who are as good as him, they might be unconsciously making it difficult for people around them to express themselves just by the way they're imposing themselves. Not necessarily deliberately or consciously, but if you're that good, you just can come with a bit of a need to be the centre of attention. I mean, I can understand that, but he doesn't have that. So I think the fact that whilst having a, a transcendent brilliance to what he was doing was also creating a lot of space for other people to do things. You never cared that way And I don't wanna cry But I know that I'ma be alright Infinite's voice, to me, was like an echo of the voices that I used to hear in Chicago house records, in those first house records. Infinite was going through a really, really, really crazy, crazy time in his life. There's this thing that I have with, like, love. I've never been in love. I've never, like, you know, like, had anyone to love. So, like, I have this thing with love that I crave it all the time, and I, and I, I want it because I've never had it. I've never seen Infinite more low in his life. And we had always been really, really close. And this trip kind of, I felt a disconnect from him for the first time. I don't like to be alone and like, it's becoming real like, annoying and hard and like, emotional. We basically had it out in the studio, like in the middle of a session, where me and Infinite were legitimately screaming, cursing and crying on the top of our lungs. like two psychopaths, and Richard's just sitting there, just watching us the whole time, letting us have this moment, which is going on for about an hour. And then after, there was a moment of silence. He's like, Infinite, go sing. Go sing. That was it. After all of that release, it was like a purge of emotion and sadness and crying and all these things. And he sang so beautifully 
the emotion that he was able to convey and like provoke was just exactly what we had been wanting him to do and he was just holding back because he was like suppressing what he was really feeling inside. What I gained from that was like, wow, this man who like brought us out here literally allowed us the space to just be humans, get it out, and to then immediately direct it into art. When I first met Richard, I was very closed in and wasn't like fully comfortable with like who I was. He kind of like showed me that someone like him, someone as big as him, can be interested in someone like me. I'm more confident now and I have more courage, you know? He helped me with all of that. Even though I was like getting there before, but like he definitely like helped me more with it. I always had a dream of being a backing vocalist. I think it's there's something so powerful in voices, and I'm obsessed with them. I always feel like they just put the song so much higher. You know, it's like it's like finding this fire in the song. You know, even if you're not singing in that particular song, or you do just one note, it makes the difference. You know, if we're not like doing some voices, we're doing some maracas. So that's beautiful because everybody's on everybody's track. What was interesting is when he sent me Kane. Um, I thought, why Kane? Kane is a cover. It's the only cover on the record. It's a Gil Scott Heron song from his album Secrets. His song is based on two chapters in a book called Kane. the link between that song and me. And then I printed the lyrics and it's like, it was, I don't know, you know, it's one of those songs that kind of changed your life and you understand it so well.
I think normally in these things, there'll be someone at the helm who's like kind of a, a, a proper de facto leader. But I really wasn't that in the live experience because I'm just not that experienced as a live performer. You know, there was no competitive element to it whatsoever. I mean, I really felt like all of these incredible vocalists, they were equally great. Everyone just held their own space in a really beautiful way. No one in this project is really an alpha type person, except Giggs. But he channels that in such an incredibly productive way that I think everyone just gets a kind of uplifted by that. Well, obviously Rich was man them, like, that we're both like proper cats for music, you know what I mean? So, so when I'm listening to all the tracks, bro, this is hot, that's mad. Yo, you know what I'm saying? It's getting me like that. Clap for the hustlers, rap for the busters, back for the cream. Cause when I rap, then it's custard. It's a fact that they're that OG, they say that thing is mustard. I couldn't stand till they cost us. I turn rap, they was buskers. Old school, they came back, then they rushed us. Fast forward, got them back to the muscles. I hit crack in the cold kids garden, I say pack to the shufflers. Nigga what, nigga what, beg your pardon? It's pack, pack, then you're busted. You don't know my brother Richard Russell. Everything's recorded. I think there was an ultimate openness to the whole making of this that was very meaningful for me of just like being willing to just put ideas out there and, and, and encouraging other people to do that. Unquestionably a theme in the record is loneliness and then potentially how to get beyond that, which is just to do with connection and collaboration and communication and, and creativity. So that is what I want people to get from this, is just the idea of creativity in and of itself is very powerful and can do a lot for you and everyone's got something to give in that regard. for years. It's very unusual this and it's extremely personal for me but it's also extremely personal for Sanford and in different ways and about different things. He's had to deal with quite a few life-changing experiences of his own. I guess that's made him very strong and confident in, in what I tend to get into deep wormholes about. So it's nice to be able to like just talk about things that openly things that scare you kind of openly, and that could be quite liberating, because those sort of things can kind of weigh you down. I just thought because everything was being recorded in terms of like music, jam sessions, everything, we speak, everything was being recorded and recycled into the process of making the album. Because whenever we were rehearsing at Richard's place, you could just see the Pro Tools sort of session just rolling past capturing magic. But yeah, he records everything and it's part of his way to make music because he works with sample a lot. It's about every sound that you hear. Every mistake is good. Little details that change everything. When you dig, dig deeper than that, everything is recorded from the moment you're born till the moment you, you die. You didn't make it the way you are by yourself. You go through your life and you go through the motions and like we're always constantly in observance. It's like the beauty of like memory. Everything that you see or hear or feel. Our memory is recording all of these experiences, these emotions. 
all of this has been kind of stored in you somehow and it does affect you. All the little things you kind of shovel and you kind of hide and you don't face as well. Those moments that are recorded are what we use to be to be creative or like what we write from, where we're coming from as human beings. Being able to see the smaller things as important and sort of revel in the smaller things. Find new value in passing moments. Being more present in your surroundings and with people, conversations, um, and yeah, the things that you do, it makes you want to value, you know, life. Yeah. 